For women living in many Middle Eastern countries, merely covering the hair is not enough. Almost every gender signal must be minimized and suppressed. These heavily veiled young women are not nuns, they're university students, screened from the world by a curtain of black cloth that completely obscures their female shape, cutting off all sexual signals from their waists, their hips, breasts, buttocks, legs, arms, hands, lips, cheeks, everything except their eyes. This is the one feature they're allowed to expose to the outside world, and even this is only permitted so that they can see where they're going. But the isolation of the eyes in this way reminds us of just how powerful this facial feature is as a signalling device. Eye contact is an intimate and direct form of communication between the human sexes. To maintain prolonged eye contact with a member of the opposite sex conveys a clear signal of carnal interest. Prolonged staring in any other context would be threatening. But for young lovers, it is not. For them, it's an essential part of the process of pair bonding and is usually performed at very close proximity. There's a special reason for this. A device called a pupillometer measures precisely changes in the size of subjects' pupils as they view a succession of images. The size of our pupils changes according to our emotional response to the object of our gaze. If we see something we like, the pupils grow bigger, regardless of any change in light levels. But if we see something repellent, they get smaller. So when young lovers are gazing closely into one another's eyes, they're unconsciously checking one another's pupils to see if they're growing larger or smaller. If they're dilating, it must mean that the partner likes what they're seeing and this acts as a powerful indication that someone is falling in love. And since we like people who like us, it follows that a face with dilated pupils is much more appealing to us than one with pupils that are mere pinpricks. This is why advertisers sometimes enlarge the pupils of girls in their advertisements so that we'll be more inclined to buy their products. And it's also the reason why in the past, Italian courtesans used to drop Bella Donna, which means literally beautiful lady, into their eyes to massively dilate their pupils and make themselves more appealing to their male partners. Beauty styles come and go, and the cultural value attached to different features varies the world over. But there are two qualities that have universal sex appeal. No culture is immune from them. I'm talking about signals of youth and health. Where sexuality is concerned, the younger and fitter a human adult is, the stronger the signals he or she transmits. It's all in the unlined skin and the flexibility of the movements. The young bounce and leap, where their elders plod or droop. The bodies of the young seem strangely softer and lighter, as though the force of gravity is being unfairly kind to them. These are powerful sexual features that never fail to impress the eyes of the beholders. An unblemished skin is one of the few universal signals of sex appeal, since it reflects both youth and health. Cosmetics can improve this signal, but eventually something more drastic is needed. Early signs of change are where there's a little bit of descent and it begins to square off the lower part of the face. So that instead of being at an angle, it's a little blocked off. We just raise the brow as a separate thing to, a, to what's a pretty height and then trim any additional tissue that's left in there. These are two different approaches. It's not the one is better than the other. 
As we age, the facial skin becomes looser and more wrinkled, until makeup alone is not enough. The answer then, if we wish to continue to transmit the powerful sexual signals of youthfulness, is cosmetic surgery, in which the facial skin is drawn back and tightened and the excess removed. This is not a procedure for the faint-hearted, and its growing popularity reveals just how much value is placed on these signals of youthfulness, particularly for the active modern female. I like the way it looks, though. When we do this kind of surgery, people will report that their friends say they look rested. But women are not alone in this. The urge to look young is one of the factors behind that strange male activity face shaving. Many adult males the world over devote a considerable amount of time to scraping off their adult male badge, the beard. It's extraordinary to think that if a man spends 10 minutes a day on this task from the age of 18 to say the age of 60, that adds up to a total of 2,555 hours or 106 days out of his life. said that shaving makes men look younger, healthier and more expressive. All this may be true, but today the most important of these factors is undoubtedly the one to do with reducing age. The clean-shaven chin gives the male face a boyish look that helps to make its owner seem much younger than he really is. And so he hopes. There are other, quite different mimics of youthfulness found among adults, and they're not confined to details of physical appearance. For instance, in every corner of the globe, couples indulge in the childlike activity of play fighting. During the early phases of pair bonding, fully adult humans perform acts of juvenile behaviour as part of their courtship. male and female companions in an identical fashion transmit juvenile signals through sudden joyful outbursts of muscular playfulness. By presenting themselves to one another almost as children they generate powerful protective urges each for the other. Demonstrations of health are of value to any young adults who wish to advertise themselves as potential sexual partners. To this end, all over the world, in almost every culture, they can be found performing strange rhythmic movements in front of one another. They want to indicate their physical fitness, but without engaging in anything as competitive as sport. So they gyrate in front of one another, enacting symbolic locomotion that goes nowhere. We call it dancing. The energetic actions of the dancers suggest vigorous physical qualities that translate well into strong procreative potential. 